tonight at 5, President Trump tells global business leaders that the U.S. won't tolerate predatory trade practices. We'll have the latest from Davos in Switzerland, where he made that speech. The other main stories on BBC News at 5. Hello, very good evening. Welcome to the BBC News at 5. I'm Jane Hill. Our top story tonight, President Donald Trump has told the World Economic Forum in Davos that the world is witnessing the resurgence of a strong and prosperous America, and there's never been a better time to invest in it. He said America first doesn't mean America alone, and the US wants to be a partner in building a better world. Earlier, he'd said he was prepared to apologise for retweeting inflammatory posts from the British far-right group Britain First in November. This report is from our diplomatic correspondent, James Robbins. Well, let's assess that speech and the reaction to it. Our business editor, Simon Jack, was listening. He joins me from Davos. In terms of the response that you're picking up on, Simon, I mean, was, was Donald Trump perhaps a little less pr protectionist than people have been concerned? What have people been saying to you? Simon, for now, thank you very much. Simon Jack there following uh, everything in Davos. Well, the UK economy grew faster than expected in the last three months of 2017, according to the Office for National Statistics. Figures released today show that GDP expanded by half a percent in the fourth quarter of last year, driven by growth in the services sector. But the ONS says the broader picture is slower and more uneven growth. Our economics correspondent Andy Verity has all those details. Well, let's talk now about the latest on Brexit, because the Brexit secretary, David Davis, has been setting out Britain's wishes for what he called an implementation period after the UK leaves the EU. He said the government should be free to negotiate and sign new trade deals. David Davis said that a strictly time-limited transition, during which Britain kept its access to the single market, would provide certainty for business. Labour has accused ministers of being in disarray over the whole issue, after Downing Street distanced itself from the Chancellor's suggestion that changes after Brexit would in fact be modest. Well, unravelling all of this for us is our political correspondent Ian Watson at Westminster. It's been um, quite a 24 hours or so when it comes to the topic of Brexit, uh, Ian much for now. Ian Watson there at Westminster. And just to tell you that uh, we'll be taking a look at all the latest twists and turns in these negotiations, all the plans, suggestions that Ian was outlining there with our reality check correspondent Chris Morris. That's coming up just after half past five. Chris will take us through all of that. Uh, you're watching BBC News. These are tonight's headlines. Thanks Lizzie. See you a little bit later. Several of the BBC's leading male news presenters have agreed to take a pay cut after revelations about unequal pay at the corporation. Jeremy Vine, Nick Robinson, John Humphreys, Hugh Edwards, John Sopel and Nicky Campbell have all agreed, either formally or in principle, to reduce their salary. It follows Carrie Gracie's resignation as China editor in protest at the unequal pay between male and female international editors. Here's our media correspondent, David Silito. A 15-year-old has been detained for more than four years after five passengers of the stolen car he was driving in Leeds were killed. A decision is due within the next couple of hours about whether the United States will add import tariffs to sales of Bombardier's C-Series aircraft. Unions have argued that the tariff could threaten up to a thousand jobs in Belfast, where the plane's wings are manufactured. Danny Savage is at the... Really, a bit more from you a little later in the evening. Thanks for now, Danny Savage there. In uh, the last few minutes, it's emerged that NHS England has decided that its guidance to hospitals to postpone all non-urgent surgery won't be extended beyond the end of this month. The decision... New guidance from the NHS Medicines Watchdog, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellent. Excellence, says most sore throats can be treated with paracetamol. Research suggests that antibiotics are being prescribed in 60% of cases, potentially contributing to the development of strains of bacteria which can't be treated by antibiotics. Here's our health correspondent, Dominic Hughes. There's been a big rise in the number of cars needing to be repaired because of damage caused by these, by potholes. The RAC says the number of cases increased by 11% in the last three months of 2017, compared with the same period the year before. More details from our transport correspondent, Victoria Fritz. 